Okay, so I am very excited because this is a project I've wanted to get to for a long time. You see, when I designed this mural and before it was even made, I always intended to have a set piece that I could use or not use that was made up of large prop art materials. I guess you could say reminiscent of Art Attack. I am unashamed. I'm happy to be the spiritual successor to Art Attack. Bring it on, baby. Now in doing this, I'm going to be sculpting foam and I don't actually know how it's gonna turn out. The last time I've done this, I, and I have done it before, a long time ago, was using this, the Hotwire Foam Factory Kit. Ooh, this is the Pro Kit. I couldn't afford the Pro Kit when I was a youngin, but I did have a single one of these and it has a hot, wire, well it's not like you heat it up, it heats it up. Anyway, there's a wire that you string between here and you turn it on, you heat it up and you sculpt and you can carve the foam. It may have nearly burnt down the outhouse in my, when I was a child. <laughs> Definitely do it with adult supervision. Fortunately, I am an adult. As you can see, I have a lot of foam. They're quite high density, they're quite thick, I want them to be durable, so it's gonna take some time to build this set piece and these giant art supplies, but I'm looking forward to, to finally getting to it and making it happen. So I'm gonna use this tester piece here to see how it ends up looking and how, how the hot things are to work with before I work on the big ones. Like I always say, you double before you dive. So we're gonna double with the medium and then we're gonna dive right in. But first you dabble. Is that what the youngins do? <laughs> All right, some assembly required. Oh, oh good. <laughs> it comes with a DVD. That's technically an instruction manual, and you know how I feel about those. Ooh, spare DVD. This is a top coat that you can paint on, and it, and it dries, and then you can paint on top of the top coat. And I figure if I do that first, then hopefully by the end of our little testing segment here, we'll be able to see uh, what it's like to work with. So I'm gonna spread it out a bit thin so it doesn't take too, too long. I wanna see uh, if I get a nice rubbery coat. So one thing at a time, here is power thing. Hey, look, there's like degrees. Of, you, can, you can turn up the temperature, that's cool. Probably says that in the instruction manual. <laughs> Let's start off with something I don't have to build. This looks like the simplest one. So we'll start off with this. Oh, what the hell? It's like an audio jack. That's so weird. I'm gonna use the non-wet end. So let's make it hot. Oh, this is just starting. So I feel like it will get, it can get hotter and work a bit faster. Feels like drawing through a marshmallow. Doesn't come with a stand. Quick, quick, quick. I'll, I'll get a stand somewhere else. But for now, look at that. Look who's a responsible adult. There you go, look at that, drawing a little smiley face. There we go, all right, I'll switch you off. There you go, that's how this one works. Now this looks a little more imposing, and the idea with this one is that you can slice off portions a little bit like a butter knife, and this is my block of butter. Oh my God! Just like that. Oh my God, that is so satisfying. Oh, that is so cool. Whew. So this one is meant to be a tension blade where it pulls it tight and you can essentially do what uh, what this knife thing here does but without the, the flex at the end. And then this one is a shaped version. I'm gonna bend this when it's completely cool to about the diameter of the shape of the face there. like that. This is the scroll table and I thought this would be particularly useful if I need to cut straight lines or longer sections of these and as you can see they're very large long blocks. So it comes with these wires. This all really does feel like an operation. It's like you got your tools you're like scalpel, scroll table. I don't really have those in operations but you get what I mean. It feels quite surgical. It must be the, the slicing and dicing. Whoa! Whew. I think the trick with this one is to just go really slow. I bought some sandpaper because I wanted to see if there is some sort of grain or surface, you know, ridges that I want to get rid of if I can shave them back. This is going to make a huge mess. <laughs> oh! I may need a vacuum cleaner in here. Oh boy. But hey, 
it works. I've done all my carving, smoothing, and shaping tests. Oh wait, wait, no. I thought I was done. I forgot one entire container. And that is the industrial knife kit. Oh wow. So this is just the one tool. <laughs> so uh, let's just grab the, the smallest, humblest of blades. What's this? Hang on, what? Oh my god. You use these wire danglies between here and it heats them up and you rest it on the... You put the blade in there, you make your shape, you put it on there and you push it and it does a clean cut along. Very cool. Let's just give this one a go and see how it cuts. Oh my god. That works fast. That heats up and cuts very quickly and very smoothly. Oh my god. This is intense. This is going to be the workhorse. Okay, so where does that leave us? Well, I've tried it out pretty much all of the tools and I'm feeling like this is going to be fun if incredibly messy and smelly. I've also left some time for this to dry. I can feel like that is that is going to be a paintable surface and it sort of seals in the foam. So before I really dive into it, I need to seriously prepare this area in a way I may not have been prepared to prepare. And prepare I did, starting off with the rugs, which if I left them open would of course act like styrofoam magnets, especially with those teeny tiny beads that spread everywhere. And then after laying down some drop sheets, made sure my room was properly ventilated with a fan on one end, the aircon in the room blowing and the door anchored open. And of course having goggles and a face masky thing and wearing my gloves when I was carving as well, because at the end of the day, they're super hot knives and if they touch my skin, that would hurt. As much as I am a bit of a goofball and rough around the edges, Safety is important, especially when working with very dangerous, hot, knife, cutty, burny things. Speaking of working with dangerous, hot, knifey, cutty, burny things, I had these tools that I needed to essentially hot swap between as I used them. And in doing so, I needed to make sure I had a way to hot swap between them without dropping them or burning or melting things accidentally. So I did the genius thing of using the foam and tools to make a custom stand, cutting out a little nook for each of the tools so they could safely nestle in there and even made a little holder for the power pack and the cable to nicely nestle into and then when using the tools it would just be a matter of grabbing the one I wanted, grabbing the cable and plugging it into the exposed input. God, I'm a genius. Now with all my tools ready to go and my workspace nicely safe and ventilated, it was time to get into making the props and that required a bit more planning. I mean, you guys know me, I'm all for improvising, but if you have a specific outcome you want to achieve and a vision you really want to get close to in your end result, it really takes going through it in a step-by-step -step process until you incrementally get there as close as you can. And this meant testing out my design and envisioning it in place with the blocks of foam I had. So I taped the blocks of foam to the stand and then drew in the art tool props referencing my original design and your comments in the recent video about my studio redesign to come up with a combination and an order I was really happy with, which I ended up with. I was pretty happy with this layout. Now with the eight props, I didn't want them all to be the same length. I did want them to get a little bit shorter on the outer edges to have a bit more of a fan effect. And then with the design and proportions prepared, it was time to finally do a little bit more preparation. I'm sorry, it requires a lot of preparation, okay? I cut a bunch of aluminium bars to size. Oh, wait, you, you Americans call them aluminum, don't you? Aluminum bars. With my bars prepared, I used my heavy duty hot knife to carve big door-like flaps at the back of each of my prop blocks of foam. And then I used the sled attached to my heavy duty hot knife handle to carve a nook the size of the aluminium, aluminum bar things. So I could pull out a little chunk of foam, put a bunch of glue in, slap the aluminium, aluminum bars in. God, I don't even know which one to stick with anymore. But I mean, the point is the same. A lot of glue on the bars, bunch of glue on the foam, slapping the foam shut, and tightly taping it so that it would be supported while it dried. And with all that preparation done and laid out, I was more than satisfied with how it looked and finally ready to dive into it.
been, I think, three days that I've spent on this project so far. And uh, I think this is as far as I can go in this video for a number of reasons. One is I actually have to pack up the studio and set it up for a bunch of other stuff. And the other is I actually think just the, the base sculpting sort of stands on its own. It's a really fun experience. And I've learned a few things along the way about this stuff. The first is this one is definitely the best one and cuts the fastest, but it's also really quite, uh, you know, that was like a tap. I accidentally tapped my flesh and it seared it instantly. So you definitely got to be careful. And I wore gloves the whole time. I just uh, missed the glove. <laughs> my cameraman burnt his jacket. Check this out. Look at that, I'm sorry Gary. So aside from that, although these tools are pretty cool, they're much slower and I think for, for like more um, low density foams, these will cut fine, especially for smaller projects. But yeah, they, they really, unless like for little fiddly bits like this, they're just too slow. However, they may come in more useful in the future when I come back to uh, fine tune the sculptures coat them and paint them. So we've got the blocking in done now. I'm really happy with the result. In fact, if I sort of step back in and... and so, so just standing back and soaking it in, it's perfect. Obviously, they're very rough around the edges, quite literally. But when I come back, we're gonna sand these babies up. We'll add a whole bunch of cool detail and that's where these may come in more useful like hairs and the brush and different like things on the anyway it'll be fun we'll get back to it but i hope this has been fun for you to watch so far and i hope you enjoy the result as a bit of a teaser as to what will end up here when i can finally finish this set piece i think it's really cool and one of the coolest things is it's modular so if i ever want like gags or props in other sets or whatever with my giant art supplies you know i got them now Cha! Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. It's a really fun project, work in progress, but the progress we've made has been awesome. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more fun with art and creativity. There are more videos on the channel you can check out over there. Otherwise, thank you for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.